Okay, so we've come to the final section, part three, Burning Bright. So as we mentioned before, um, you always want to pay attention to titles, right? If an uh, author has given a title, generally it's going to have a little bit deeper meaning than just the immediate sense of the words. Um, so Burning Bright. Let me get a nice bright orange for this. All right. Burning bright. What's it going to refer to? Well, we've seen that there's been a, a steady background hum of war. And what kind of war? Atomic war. And so that's one possibility. What might be burning bright here. The other option is Montag himself. He's been characterized as burning up, uh, feverish, on fire. Um, we already have um, Montag with the inner illumination kind of coming out, bubbling out of him in a very erratic way. And so if we consider, you know, this, this inner illumination um, as it connects to the idea of fire, well, like we said, right, at the beginning, the double signification of words and the double use of things like fire, it needs to be controlled to be useful, to provide warmth, comfort, as a tool, as light, all of that needs to be controlled to be useful. So this this inner illumination, this fire that is now in Montag himself, is very dangerous because if fire is not controlled, if it's uncontrolled, then it's erratic and unpredictable. You don't know where it's kind of going to go and what it's going to burn. It's super dangerous. Okay, so is it Montag burning brighter and brighter with the knowledge? But now we see Montag in a setup here. Beatty knew about his betrayal of the government and of the Firemen League and now they've suddenly arrived at Montag's house. So what's going to be burning bright here? Well, for one, we know Montag's house is going to have to, you know, go up in flames here. All right, so there can be more. Uh, I'm assuming you've already read ahead. Um, so. As we get to it, I'll mention what else is burning bright, but just keep in mind we've got the atomic war background, we've got Montag himself, we've got his house, are all things that could be brightly burning. And that brightness, <clears throat> previous, was associated with Clarice McClellan and her family and that self-reflective illumination. And that is coming from where? Knowledge. So what else is going to be burning bright? Well, there's a few things, but we want to keep some of these threads kind of weaving them together. And notice the first word we start with is lights. 
Lights flicked on and the house doors opened all down the street to watch the carnival set up. Well, if the lights flicked on all down the street, that means the lights were off. So this can be a nighttime scene. And remember that night and darkness represent ignorance. And so most all of the houses except Clarice's bright house from earlier in the novel were all in darkness. They were illuminated by the electric glow of the parlor walls of the big giant wall screen TVs. Not true light, electrical light. Okay, the, the street is in darkness. These people are in their ignorance, lit up by a false light. The false light of the parlor walls of electricity versus the natural light of fire which we'll get much more clearly um, when Montag goes on the river and he's going down the river to go to Granger's settlement. All right, so we don't need, to, th that's the key set up um, here. And I may skip by some of this because we don't need to go through all of the back and forth between Beatty and Montag. But notice everyone's watching. There's the kind of entertainment aspect. We talked about that in the opening lecture, that uh, kind of macabre or dark forms of entertainment. People watch these chases of the firemen and the burning of houses on TV. There's surveillance society, and there's like a kind of gruesome entertainment culture associated with it. Okay, to watch the carnival set up. Montag and Beatty stared, one with dry satisfaction, the other with disbelief, at the house before them, the main ring in which torches could be juggled and fire eaten. Well, said Beatty, now you did it. Old Montag wanted to fly near the sun, and now he's burnt his damn wings, he wonders why. Didn't I hint enough when I sent the hound around your place? Okay. We have a very important illusion here, which we need to catch to get the meaning. He says Montag wanted to fly near the sun, and now he's burnt his damn wings. So what, what's he talking about here? Well, the reference is to Icarus. The Greek mythology legend of Icarus was someone who was trying to escape from the Minotaur's labyrinth and he made wings of wax and flew to escape from an enemy. But because the wings were made of wax, Icarus's father warned him, don't fly too close to the sun because it will burn your wings and you'll fall and drown and that's exactly what happened Icarus flew too high okay so the the illusion is talking about overreaching trying to do something that's like too difficult or bigger than yourself and not having wisdom of how to do something properly and yeah, Montag is guilty of that. He was erratic. He was unpredictable. He got that fire inside of him, but he wasn't able to control it properly. It was uncontrolled. And now he's in trouble. He's caught. And now we get confirmation that Beatty had sent the hound around to his place to kind of warn him, give him a chance to stop his behavior. 
Montag's face was entirely numb and featureless. He felt his head turn like a stone carving to the next pl to the dark place next door, set in its bright borders and flowers. And that is looking over at Clarice McClellan's house. Beatty snorted, Oh no, you weren't fooled by that little idiot's routine now, were you? Flowers, butterflies, leaves, sunsets, oh hell. It's all in her file. I'll be damned, I've hit the bullseye. Look at the sick look on your face. A few grass blades in the quarters of the moon? What trash? What good did she ever do with all that? Montag sat on the cold fender of the dragon, moving his head half an inch to the left, half an inch to the right, left, right, left, right, left. She saw everything. She didn't do anything to anybody. She just let them alone. Alone, hell. She chewed around you, didn't she? One of those damn do-gooders with their shocked holier-than-thou silences, their one talent making others feel guilty. God damn, they rise like the midnight sun to sweat you in your bed. The front door opened. Mildred came down the steps, running, one suitcase held with a dreamlike clenching rigidity in her fist as a beetle taxi hissed to the curb. Mildred! She ran past with her body stiff, her face flowered with powder, her mouth gone, without lipstick. Mildred, you didn't put in the alarm. She shoved the valise and the waiting beetle climbed in and sat mumbling, Poor family, poor family. Oh, everything gone, everything, everything gone now. Beatty grabbed Montag's shoulder as the beetle blasted away and hit 70 miles an hour far down the street. Gone. There was a crash, like the falling parts of a dream, fashioned out of warped glass, mirrors, and crystal prisms. Montag drifted about as if still another incomprehensible storm had turned him to see stone men in black wielding axes, shattering window panes to provide cross ventilation. So, Mildred takes off. All she cares about, poor family, poor family, is her parlor wall screen family. She doesn't care about Montag. She cares about her fake family. And we'll learn she betrayed him. She's the one who called and reported the books and reported Montag. Notice that windows are smashed. Windows were symbols of light, especially with Clarice McClellan's house. And windows, you know, we can make a pretty clear connection to mirrors, which are going to be important later. Okay, so the smashing of that is like the bringing of darkness, smashing Montag's illumination. All right, so. Um, Montag is talking to Faber. Faber is saying, like, hey, can you get out of there? Can you escape? But he can't, really. Um, and here we get an important description of fire. And the symbolism of fire that Beatty gives, actually. What is there about fire? So Beatty flicked his igniter nearby. And the small orange flame drew his fascinated gaze. So Beatty is taunting Montag. But he's going to give a meditation on fire here. On its purpose. And its power. What is there about fire that's so lovely? No matter what age we are, what draws us to it? Beatty blew out the flame and lit it again. It's perpetual motion, the thing man wanted to invent but never did, or almost perpetual motion. If you let it go on, it burn our lifetimes out. What is fire? It's a mystery. Scientists give us gobbledygook about friction and molecules, but they don't really know. Its real beauty is that it destroys responsibility and consequences. A problem gets too bur burdensome, then into the furnace with it. Now, Montag, you're a burden and fire will lift you off my shoulders, queen, quick, sure, nothing to rot later, antibiotic, aesthetic, practical. So fire is seen as a purifier, cleansing. All right.
that's it for this video.